All right, so that's how it ended at the Tiad Stadium. Manchester City, zero. Um, Arsenal, zero. Guys, uh, Dennis, yeah. a lot of people were expecting that Arsenal would be slotted at the Etihad Stadium because it's the Etihad. Arsenal have only won two matches ever since the Sheikh Mansour takeover, 2008. They've only won two. Yeah, I think they've not, won, they've, they've not won their nine seasons. Basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yes, um, I didn't expect them to get slotted, no. But I expected City to win. That was, that's, what I, that's what I expected. Um, listen, I've had a lot of Arsenal fans come at me because in December, I was very critical of the team. And I said that I didn't see any kind of seriousness in the team because I felt for a team that was for willing and, and um, was so much in a hurry to win the league because they had not won it in 20 years. And I thought there was, there was, there was much hunger for them. And what they were doing in December was, was unacceptable. So, and for Arsenal fans themselves, if they realize, they realize ever since I made that statement, they have actually improved. <laughs> that was on a lighter note, though. Because ever since I made that statement, they've gone on to make, you know, have some very good runs, you know, winning big margins. And uh, so they've actually raised their game. I, I will not deny that fact. Arsenal has massively improved from December when they were conceding a lot and all of that. And that is why I felt that uh, as much as I expected City, City to win the game, I didn't, um, I didn't think I was going to mean by a big margin. But let's go into the game itself. Let me give you some context. Um, so, City, I expected them to have a bit more of the ball, like, like they normally do at the ET hard. Mm -hmm. what, I can, what Arteta did today was not to overly commit to the press. And that is what they managed how they come in and out. And you realize I'm some of the, most of the times you're actually, you know, uh, on, on the backdrop. You know, expecting City to do the incursions. But for the first time, I realized something. I've never seen City this scared. You know, when, whenever you see City, at the Etihad, they, they always impose the game on them. And for the first 15 minutes, I realized City was scared. And that's something I've never seen with Manchester City. And that tells you the kind of effort Arsenal has put into their game. Uh, for them to come into the, to the Etihad and play the way they did. People say, yeah, the game was exciting. Because last season, this fixture in the 4-1. Exactly. And, and it's been like Manchester that for, a very, for yeah. a very big, it's always been big matches. 5-1, 6-2. They, they, they they were, Man City were, just, were not just beating Arsenal, they were humiliating them. And that is why people expect, were expectant of a big win. But they put in a good result. That's why I'm surprised that I've had a few pundits say that Arsenal didn't play. They just came in and sat back. I'm like, no. It's the same Arsenal team we've criticized over the years that they come into these games and there's no street, streetwise approach because it's always about one way, trying to get more of the ball and trying to you know, overly possess and score. But I, I think Arteta came with a plan. His plan was not to give City too many chances, trying to play a bit on the counter attack because there are several times I feel that probably they could have, you know, go for it because... City had defensive issues. Kawaka is injured. Um, Stones. Stones, which is a major part of this Man City framework, is also out. Because mm. naturally, who would have expected, you know, stepping into midfield and then pushing the buttons? Because you see, what has changed with the City team from last two seasons is that now they have a target man in Haaland. Meaning that they don't just play the passes around, sometimes they go direct. Yeah. So when you have somebody like Stones coming in midfield and pushing up, it, create, it leaves some, some, some uh, holes at the back. But at the same time, too, they know that they have a target man. So that mix has always been managed well by, by Pep. So for him, being missing was a big deal for Man City. But as Man came into the game, started slowly, they, they managed to take care of Haaland. And there's, there's one, one thing we need to highlight. Haaland has is, been struggling in these big games. So anytime he's pinned by a defender, I've seen it several times. I've watched it against Rudiger, I've watched it against Van Dijk, I've watched it... You know, there are several, I can give you a lot of instances. Gabriel did the same thing on him today. That anytime he's pinned, he does, he's he just he out of the game. Yeah. He, he, he struggles. And I even thought that there was a point in time where I expected Alvarez to come into the game mm -hmm. because he was non-existent. He was out of the game. And it's not more of what City were doing. It's more of what Arsenal was also doing. They were not giving them spaces. And I, I think they've done something I've not seen them in a long time. And I'm giving them so much credit for it because they managed to stay in the game from, day, from minutes one to the end of the and, and this is the thing that I, I, am, I am happy about because Arsenal has come into this game so much pressure. People are expecting, people are asking, yeah, they've had a good, they have had a good streak of games winning with big margins. What are they going to do? Are they going to fall, falter? Are you going to see the same Arsenal team choking again? But actually, they didn't do that. And mm. I, I was impressed with what they did today. They, were, they stayed in the game throughout. But for City, I'm, I'm, you know, for me, I have, I've, I've made a favorite for the title. But I'm beginning to question a few things. They've, all, they've not beaten any of the top five sides this season. And these are not good indicators for a title-winning team. If, if, and, and even then, so you see, from the previous title they've won last two years, you see, 
It's, it's unlike them. Mm -hmm. It's told that it's something wrong. They're not playing at full capacity, but it's also because of what... I, I, I don't believe that... I know Arsenal has improved. I don't think Liverpool have been so much up there. I just feel that City have dropped a bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's obvious, you know. Uh, I, I will not... I'll, that's what I'm saying, that Arsenal have improved, but I don't think they've gotten to a point where I think that they've really matched City boot for boot or they are, they are gotten... But City have dropped for a lot of reasons. I don't... I don't believe in the business indeed they did in um, the offseason. Letting Gundogan go, I don't think it was really replaced, bringing mm -hmm. Kovacic. There's, there are some funny, you know, yes. they are not really playing at that level. And I think that is what Liverpool and, and Arsenal are taking advantage of. And, and for me, I'll be happy if there's a new winner. Listen, I, mean, I, want, it, I want Arsenal to win this title. Yeah. Not because I'm an Arsenal fan, yeah. but because I felt that for 20 years they've starved too much. This, these Arsenal fans have been crying for so long. <laughs> huh? They have been crying for so long. And I want to see them smile. You know, that is the thing. They don't know that actually I want the best for them. That's yeah. what they don't realize. <laughs> eh? They're always criticizing me that I'm on them. But I want well, the best for them. So that's so, that is the message <laughs> to the first time who just... Yeah, um, so, yeah. So, so, yeah. So, yes, I, 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 I do think that they, they, for, the, for the first time, they came to the Etihad and showed up. And I, the massive credit should be given to Arteta. I think he had, the game plan was perfect. City was one of the best. And I feel that at this point, nine games to go. They are difficult fixtures, but they need to grind out the results. And this is where these are title defining moments. Mm. It's about winning the games. It's not about style. It's not about how you do it. It's about just getting more than the opposition. And that is what Arsenal has to do or Liverpool has to do because I want to see a new winner. I, I think City have been too dominant. But don't forget, I will not rule them out of this. I just feel that I'm giving Liverpool the favorite tag now, but I think City have so much experience to make it happen. To navigate through. To navigate through. So it's, it's an interesting race. We'll see what happens. Kwame, um, all three teams have got European commitment. City and the Champions League. Liverpool in the Europa. Arsenal, same. Um, Champions League. I mean, <laughs> what are you envisaging from these three teams in terms of combining that and what they have to do in the Premier League too? Um, I think maybe Arsenal will be, the, will be a stranger to that. City are no strangers to that. They won the treble last season. They were playing in like three competitions yeah. at a goal. They were able to win that. Liverpool, too, are no strangers to that. They were chasing a quadruple some time back. <laughs> they've, they've, <laughs> they've been in Champions League. So the main question will be on Arsenal and how they'll be able to perform. We saw that they didn't triumph uh, over Porto convincingly no. in the Champions League. So struggled. that would be a big test for them. And that's why... It's, it's really difficult for me to pinpoint a favorite. But then let me give you one thing about Arsenal I have been very impressed with this season. So when they lost to Fulham 2-1, on the backdrop of that poor show win in December after losing to yeah. West Ham, and all, they think there was a break and they come in, think either Qatar or Dubai. After that camp in Qatar or Dubai, when Arsenal got back, they've, played, they've won eight successive Premier League games. Mm -hmm. They've scored over 33 goals and they've conceded just four. It shows you that their yeah, defensive yeah. unit... So you were talking about Kawaka and Stones not showing up. For most part of last season, Arsenal was without Saliba. Yeah. And I think that was a big thing that really harmed Arsenal's yeah. uh, title ch chases. And I think today's episode should be titled, you, you get what you buy. Declan Rice, absolutely top-notch yeah. buy. He's been, he's been able to step up into that position and... Pate is a, Ghana, is a Ghanaian boy. We all love Pate. But at a point in the season last season, Pate was worn out. Jesus, he was worn out. He was just not... It's not just Pate, but the whole team had lost their colour. But look at, the, look at the players that came from the bench today. There's Rice playing, but you could bring on Pate. Uh, and and Pate. that's one other thing yeah. that haunted them last season. Exactly. Yeah. Squad lack of depth, yeah. They didn't yeah. have depth, but they have the depth. Because they had no, Martinelli on the bench. Yeah, they did. From injury. Pate yeah. on the bench. Um, there was Zinchenko who was on the bench. Yeah. Even at a point in time this season, Eddie Nketiah was getting them the goals. Yes. Eddie Nketiah is no longer yeah. playing. Yeah. So, I feel like they've gotten better. And Mikel Arteta also knew what he wanted with the David Raya thing. Because, you know, it became a thing in England, Ramsdale. It's, 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 it's dead. It's, dying, yeah. it's no longer a conversation anymore. So, I think they know what they want. But, pinpointing to this game, to be very honest, I think one or two things killed Arsenal, and that is, they could, especially Odegaard, he could not find, and I was so, I was so shocked, because he's a, he has good quality, he could not find that pass 
all he needed was one time passes, one time passes, and he was mistiming those passes. They don't seem like chances to those passes are successive. We saw that with McAllister in the Liverpool game. Mm. He missed out on that. With City, it's been running through this season from their games against Chelsea. I don't think people count Chelsea as top five anymore because they are now a mid-table team. Uh, um, with their, against Chelsea, against uh, the big teams. Relegation teams, stop flattering us. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 their chance creation is really, really poor. Yeah. They look scary because they, of the places they get the ball. It's mostly in your box. So you need to be hyper-concentrated. And I think that's what Arsenal did today. They limited it. Because how many times do you think Raya was tested apart from Ake's header? No. You can barely think of any yeah. time Raya Sizi was tested. just one, one shot on target. Yeah, and yeah. it's the same for Arsenal yeah. testing. Um, and you see, I do not blame Ortega. Arsenal. You see, if you, if you remember Arsenal City at the Etihad last season... Arsenal were like so they were so high up yeah. that Haaland was able to operate. Exactly. That was the game he took off his hair, flashing his hair, and all of those kind of yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he couldn't even take off. <laughs> even if it was a wing, he couldn't even take it off today because he didn't have that yeah. great to give. Yeah. Because Arsenal gave them space. Yeah. The spaces between Ramsdale and the defense, the back line was so huge. So all Haaland needed to do was time his run. But today, when Arsenal were out of possession, they quickly came back. Yeah. See, there's no harm in Harambo. Yeah, you, you are here to watch. I saw, at a point, I saw Gabi Jesus. Yeah. I saw Bukayo Saka drop yeah. very deep. deep. Because that's how you play against no, City. There's nothing yeah. like, even there's nothing like Harambo. There's, there's nothing like it's Harambo. They say, they say when, when Shondai does it, you, ah, you call no. it Harambo or Dinosaur Ball. But when Ateta does it, it's peak <laughs> oh, entertainment yes. football. Well, <laughs> I mean, interesting conversation from that game. As now playing out here, uh, picking up very vital points at the um, Etihad Stadium. They played out a goalless draw with uh, Manchester City. We'll take another quick break. When we come back, we'll delve into the Italian Serie A. There's more for you. My name is Gabby Ofe. Still watching Scorecard right here on City TV. <laughs> 